Hi there, welcome to this build of a 45 inch wingspan quiver. Now the quiver is a scaled down version of the late 1930s iconic Quaker. We're building this quiver from a great set of plans that we've downloaded from the Outer Zone website and there'll be a link in the description below where you can download these for free. They're a really nice set of plans. Well you can see in front of me this quiver is almost finished. We've got the wings covered, we've got the tailplane, the fin and the rudder covered. But the fuselage is looking a little bit naked at the moment. So I think what we're going to do in today's video is we're going to cover this fuselage in laminating film. Ready so we can start putting on a really nice Japanese Asuka tissue. Now the laminating film that we're going to be covering this fuselage with is it it's, comes on a roll it's a, a document laminating film so it's not from the kind of uh, aeroplane modeling kind of sector it's it's kind of for business laminating machines it's 320 mil wide this roll and the length of the roll is 150 meters it's extremely cheap this cost me about 19 pounds sterling for this roll and this is 38 micron thick so it's a really nice thin film it shrinks really nicely it stretches and it's got an integral glue like a, a traditional modeling uh, uh, heat shrink film so we can stick it down to our models with a, a, a covering iron we don't need to use a separate glue and actually I love using this material it's really nice and because it's so cheap if we make a mess it's not a big problem we can take it off and start again I mean a 150 meter roll for what 19 pounds sterling is, is pretty good so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to stow away the, uh, the wing and the tail assembly somewhere safe and we'll have a look at what we're going to do to get this fuselage covered. Okay, so we're going to cover this in the laminating film first, which I've talked about. Now, what tools and things am I going to use? Well, I've got a towel, a spare towel. In fact, I've got two spare towels. And I always find these really useful. If you just want to hold something still, you can put a towel on it or if you want to just support something it's why you're working on it. I, found, I find towels like this, I mean they're only really cheap cotton towels, really really useful. I've got this smaller towel here which I find my covering iron I can just plonk on it while I'm working. I haven't got a stand or anything like that, I just put it on the towel, it's a cotton towel, it's not going to uh, damage the, it's not going to melt, it's not a, a, you know got polyester or anything in it. So I can just put the iron on it like that without thinking about it as I'm working. It's great. Really useful. I used to have a metal stand that used to drive me mad, but this is brilliant. So the iron is a Prolux digital iron and this is great. I use it all the time. I've used it on lots of different models. I've had it for quite a few years now. And there's a review in the description below this video or there's a link to a review. I've got two sides of scalpels. I've got a, a number four handle and a number three handle with a 26 blade and a 10A blade. I, I find scalpels fantastic because they are so so sharp and it's worth changing the blades numerous times when you're covering because it's surprising how dull they can get when you're covering film and you want to get a really nice sharp cut so you don't want anything jagged and finally the other thing I'm going to be using is a heat gun with more conventional modeling heat shrink film I tend not to use a heat gun much these days I prefer the iron but with laminating film I find it quite a useful uh, a useful tool to uh, to shrink it as a whole I just seem to get better results so but we'll see how we go and uh, and how it develops so the laminating film will cut a piece of this I'll move the camera around so we can just see the bench and see what we're doing 
I've really been looking forward to getting this covered and I think particularly since I decided to put on the stringers which weren't on the plan I just thought it would look really nice. Now as far as the covering I'm hoping to do the whole fuselage in just two pieces of covering film or the, the laminating film and what I'm thinking is first off I'm going to be putting a piece that comes all the way up the sides and over the top and right down to the tip and right up to the front of the nose here. Now that might end up being a little bit of a challenge so that would be the one piece. I'm obviously going to need to cut it here to bring it, allow it to run straight through there I think and the same at the back. If we mess this up we can, <laughs> we can start again and, uh, and do it slightly differently. So what I'm going to do is cut a piece of film. Now I said this film has got its own glue and you can see the, um, this is a shiny side so that is the top surface. We then have a matte side which is the glue side so that needs to be down on the fuselage. You can see it's opaque at the mo moment, but once we start to put heat on it, it will go clear. Now, if I cut a piece of this long enough, that will go right from the tail to the nose. And, and I'll keep saying this is cheap, but because it's cheap, you feel quite happy about being generous on the amount of film that you're going to, going to cut, and uh, you don't mind wasting a little bit of it. There we go. Now, what we want to do when we get this on, I think, is to wrap it around as tight as possible and just literally stick it along this bottom edge. I don't want to stick it to any of the stringers or the long runs other than the two long runs on the bottom. I just want to wrap it and pull it tight and then we can go about shrinking the whole thing as a whole. If I stick it and compartmentalize it then the, the shrinkage is a lot harder. If we have a wrinkle at the top here and it's compartmentalized then we're just trying to shrink a small bit but if we leave it as a whole then shrinking here will help us on the top. Hope that makes sense. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to play around with this for a little bit and maybe I've got some bulldog clips just here and uh, maybe if I just bring this round and clip it that might help. So I'm going to get on with this now and see how we can best set this up to, uh, to get it stuck on. I think I might put a, a slit here in this back and that will allow that to sit down better because at the moment because of the change of direction here we've got a it puts in a, a quite a nasty crease there and I think if we put a slit there in the back I think I need to change my blade on this then that will sit down a lot easier Cut that. Yeah, that is going to sit down a lot easier with those wrinkles pulling out. So we'll start to get this done now. I'll plug my iron in and bring that up to temperature. Now, as far as the temperatures for this, I want to be when I'm sticking it down along with the longer runs here. I want to have my iron uh, as cool as I can to get it stuck down, I don't want to shrink it at all. So I'm going to be using on about 110 degrees C. Uh, if I go up to 130, 140, I'm going to be shrinking it as I'm sticking it and I don't want to do that. I want to get it all stuck as tight as I can, just sticking it on and then shrink it once I've done that. Right, well I've spent quite a while sorting out this film and I'm not sure whether it's going to work or not. I've got one piece on as I said and we've got it all the way coming up the side here. 
it's on the top little bit of uh, slack here and then it comes all the way up this side it doesn't it's the roll isn't quite wide enough to be able to do all of the front so if I can get this bit to work as one piece what I'm going to do is I will cut it here and join it and put in a, a join. I mean the seams don't really show but I'd just rather not join it if I can help it but it's under the wing so it won't show. I mean I, I'm only going to stick the film here. I'm not going to film the windows obviously. So we'll have a go at this and we'll see what it's like. There, there are bits of slack in it. I've, I've used some of my scotch magic tape to pull this together roughly but I think I can tension it a little bit more as I go so yes we'll see how this goes and if it's not right we'll take it off and we'll have to do it in uh, in sections but I'd just rather not because I'd like it to just kiss the corners here uh, to get that nice profile I don't really want to stick it down onto these uh, these longer runs first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to do down this side and just pulling it tight as I go. Like I said this stuff does shrink and uh, it doesn't shrink too bad to be honest but the tighter we can get it the better. Now when we're using an iron like this the best thing we can do is to move away in the direction that we're trying to stretch it. If we go up and down the long run like that it kind of pushes the film ahead of it and you end up with a, a little bit of a, a wave at the, or a, a wrinkle. You set up a wave and it causes a, a wrinkle at the end. So we'll just move that like that. Right, we've got this side stuck down now and that is looking uh, pretty taut considering we haven't shrunk it yet. What I'm going to do now I think is start on this top piece here on the front of the, uh, I don't know whether you'd call that a turtle deck, but on the, 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 the top of the fuselage there at the back of the wings. And we will just pull that round tight to try and get this uh, as, as wrinkle free as possible. And then we'll work our way down the fuselage. Right, I'm now feeling quite positive about this. I've got it wrapped around there and it's not looking too bad. Um, there are some wrinkles on that side and a few on that side but I think we'll be able to shrink those out. Now what I'm going to do, I'm not going to shrink it yet because it will just pull off here and we, we won't achieve what we want but I'm going to go along and I'm going to just trim the film about 316 so the width of the longer on off the longer on like that. And the reason I'm doing that is because what I'm going to do then is I'm just going to cut it and then we can iron that around on the inside like that and it will just it will give it an extra 50% covering area down that side so you can see I've just folded that bit in and stuck it on the inside there and I'm going to go along and do that on both sides. And then once we've got that done, we'll stick on this bottom piece and the moment of truth, <laughs> we'll have a go at shrinking it. And if it's not right, we'll rip it off. But uh, fingers crossed, eh? I've now got the bottom on and a uh, few wrinkles, but nothing of, of any concern. And I've got a bit of a flap here. So I'm going to uh, just put my towel on that end to hold it and I'm going to run a scalpel down and just trim that, trim that off. Right, we're on the home stretch now with getting this on and the only last bit we've got to do is this little bit to infill here. Got the, the bottom on and that's gone fairly wrinkle free as I have the sides the top and uh, obviously that side we don't need to add anything in but what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add a piece there and I've decided to do a 45 degree cut and join now hopefully we can just stick this on and uh, 
and that will be it. But I don't know how easy this will go. But it is under the wing if we want to start making our excuses at this point. <laughs> at this point. So I'm going to tack it at that end anyway. And I think what I'm going to do is work my way up and um, just try and do it with the very tip of the iron. Now this is going to stick it to the strut a little bit underneath. So once it's stuck in place, I am going to um, I'm going to just perhaps slide a ruler under there or something to uh, to free it off from that strut because we we don't want it stuck on the on the strut. But we'll just carefully go up that, and that seems to be sticking all right. So. Right, now we're going to cut along here, so I will just stick that down there a little bit, Let's leave it like that, oops, and now at this point I will just carefully slide my ruler under and unstick it from that strut if it is. Actually that's, that's fine on that side. And that's fine there. So hopefully now we can just pull it towards us to uh, tighten it a little bit. I think I'll do this bottom edge first. So I'll do this bottom edge, I'll probably do the top edge and pull it tight and do it down here and then we're ready to start shrinking. Just a word of warning here, we need to be really careful when we're <clears throat> sticking this bit on because we are sticking it to the acetate and if we're not careful we'll warp the acetate so we need to be really really careful at this point. Right well this is all stuck down now and we're going to start shrinking it and to start with I'm going to do the underside and I will do that with the iron and my iron's just coming up to temperature now I've set it for 150 degrees C which uh, should be just right for getting a nice shrink on this. And you can see that going clear as it's, uh, as it's shrinking. It's interesting this film because it shrinks with heat but it also shrinks as it cools, it, it contracts as, as it cools down. So if there's a wrinkle still in it after you've heated it, if you just wait a minute while it cools down, or wait a few seconds, while it cools down then uh, then it looks a lot better and the wrinkle often disappears. So, this is doing quite nicely. I thought if I get this bit done first I can also make sure with a nice hot iron that the seams are really tight because the last thing we want when we start shrinking these sides is for the film to start slipping um, and end up with us actually not shrinking the the uh, the film it just it just slides off and ends up still wrinkled so we'll seal that nicely there we go one thing I notice about this film and this possibly because it's quite thin is that it'll shrink quite well but it hasn't got a strong pull to it so it won't damage structures so much and it doesn't pull off the edges so much as something like Aura Cover which shrinks a lot but is really strong when you shrink it and can warp wings and, and pull it off uh, structures. So hopefully this will be okay. Now I'm tempted to go along the top here I think first with the air gun and just do that bit. But I'm concerned about it pulling off here and it pulling off here, lifting up here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a piece of balsa like that pin down and hopefully that will just help hold it in place because the last thing we want to do is to have it starting to, to pull off. These are glass headed pins so it's not going to, uh, the heat isn't going to damage the pins. I mean, this, to be honest, it might make no difference at all, but if we can stop it from uh, pulling off, 
that would be really useful and I'm going to do it at this end as well and we need to be really careful when we're using the heat gun around the windows because we will damage the acetate if we're not careful so let me just push the pins in that first Okay, right, we've got that done and I can always put <laughs> I can always put my thumb over it while I'm doing it to help hold that in place. So we're going to use the heat gun, turn my iron off, and we obviously need to be careful that we don't burn through this, but we want to try and keep it keep it moving. Now I'm going to move around to the side. So my cables are just a little bit twisted. Let me sort that out. It's driving me nuts. There we go. Now that side is looking quite good. We've still got a few little wrinkles around the top here, but let's get this other side done first before we revisit that. Right, now that's not looking too bad, but I don't know whether you noticed, I did damage the film just here. Just blown a little bit of a hole in it. Now, just going to wait for that to cool down and see. I am really tempted to leave that because there's quite a lot of work in this so far. And we can still put the tissue over that, I think, without... Um, without taking it off. Let me get the rest of it done and we'll see how the rest of it goes. Yeah, I just got that a little bit too hot. I'm loath to take it off because the rest of it is actually looking pretty good. I need to do this corner. There we go, that's done there. Yeah, I just got it a little bit too hot, that's a real pain. But I think it will be okay. Let's just do this bit here, there's another wrinkle. It's got that out. And now just this last bit. Actually I noticed that needs sticking down just a little bit there, I haven't stuck it down with the iron. So I'm gonna go around and just stick that with the iron, make sure that's okay. And, uh, and then I'll finish it off and trim it up. Like I say, I think I'm going to leave that because I think when the tissue goes on that, as long as I'm careful, we won't notice that hole, hopefully. And the strength will still be there. It's a shame, I, 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 it, it is a shame, but um, it would be, hardly seems worth taking it off just because of that little hole. Right, well, we've now got this finished and 
I, I'm really pleased with it and we can take a closer look now. On the whole, I am really pleased with it. It's gone on lovely and it was a little bit tricky trying to do it in just that big piece doing both sides but it has given those lovely lines on the corner. We haven't had to try and do seams here, which is the thing that I really wanted to avoid. So it was nice and clean. The additional bit that we had to add in here has gone in more or less seamlessly. And once the tissue's on that, we won't notice at all. The sort of downside, if you like, is the the little bit of damage I did to the film there, I'll just get that in the light, and I've just blown a little bit of a hole in it. But it looks stable, it doesn't look like it's going to get any worse, it's not going to, to run. And it would be a crying shame to strip this off, the amount of time I've put into it. And I think that when it's got the tissue on it, that will hardly be noticeable. And I may even double up the tissue here just the way I'm doing the design so I, I, I don't have a problem with that. that that's fine I'm happy to leave it the piece of balsa that I put on here seems to have kept that nice and stepped there just ready for the wings to fit into it so I think that was a good idea and the same with the piece on the back well great to get this covered today and I'm not going to be doing anything else. I always find it quite mentally taxing, sort of thinking about how you're going to do it. But I am really, really looking forward to starting the tissue, and I'll be starting that tomorrow. I need to think about making up some templates so we get a nice design that complements the wing and the tail plane. But I'm going to draw this video to a close now. And uh, I hope you found it useful and interesting. And if you want uh, more information about covering with laminating film then have a look in the description below this video and there'll be a, a couple of links I think I'll have to think about it but there'll be certainly one link anyway to show you perhaps in more detail or just another another kind of uh, surface to cover but there's also the wings and the tail plane which we covered in the same manner so anyway thanks very much for watching and come back and see how we get on putting the tissue on this lovely 45 inch wingspan quiver.